Voices from Oxford has the privilege today of talking to Samuel Shem, the author of a remarkable book, The House of God, and we're going to discuss with him what its meaning is, what its message was, and what its message continues to be. So, Steve, do we call you Steve or Samuel? Uh, to whom are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> I thought you might say that, but seriously. Call me uh, Sam. 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 So, okay. yes. As the house of God was written, first of all, it created quite a stir. But there's actually a very serious message there, isn't there? Yes. Uh, when it first came out in 1978, uh, people really hated it. Uh, a lot of the people really hated it, the older generation of doctors. Oh, doctors who thought presumably they were being very severely criticized, yes. which they were. Yeah. Yes. Well, let's go back a step. The, the House of God was the story of my medical internship at the Beth Israel Hospital in Boston in 1973-74. And I wrote it because I was outraged at the inhumanity, both to the patients and yeah. to me. And yeah. I figured, I'd never written a novel, I figured somebody has to write about this, and yes. it, someone is me. Yes. So I just, I started in, a, in your house uh, down in southern France, and I wrote the first sentence. Well, that's where the sentence begins, it was starts in France, doesn't it? Except for yes. her sunglasses, Barry is naked. Yes. And it continued. Uh, and it was a, a, a very uninhibited, full of passion uh, book about the inhumanity of medical training in 1973-74. Yes. And since it was a Harvard hospital, Beth Israel Hospital, Harvard hated me and yes. said some, did some pretty nasty things. And, and then you became a professor at Harvard University and now at New York University. Right. And it just so was, does that tell us something, that it takes a new generation for compassion to be understood? Uh, I think that's true. I think that what uh, I have learned in my life is that uh, self-centeredness is a risk yes. and that yes. good connection or good compassion is what heals people. Yes. And so uh, Harvard didn't really pay attention to that when I was there. I was never asked to speak there. Okay. But uh, many, many years later, NYU Medical School, which is a great medical school, uh, offered me a professorship in medicine and medical humanities. I'd never published a paper, yes. you know, and I said yes. I would, and they brought me in for the house of God. Well, you published a book instead of a paper, my goodness. Yes. I mean, the humanities, that counts, doesn't it? But to return to the theme, you talk of it sometimes as introducing humanity back into medicine. Is that a good way of describing what the mission is? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I was stimulated by the suffering that I saw in the house of God, both in, in terms of me and my uh, fellow doctors and the patients. And what I've learned in a Buddhist practice since, and from a lot of life experience, is that suffering attracts compassion in the right, that suffering and, and compassion co-arise in the right setting. So when I go out now, all I talk about is the risk of isolation and the healing power of good connection, which is another way of saying, what's good connection? Good connection is mutual connection, it's compassionate connection. Yeah. So, to finish this brief interview, you have a, also a different view of the nature, the biological nature of humanity, which is, if I've got you right, that we are actually not born selfish, but right. in a sense born as social animals. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Throughout the history of trying to understand people, uh, there's been a lot of talk about the self. And Freud, who was a, you know, a, a product of that dominant yes. view in, in yeah. uh, the 19th century, yeah. said on no data that we come into the world driven by the dual instinctual libidinal drives of sex and aggression. He had, no, he had no data for that. That was something that his way of being brought out in his patients. And then about 20 years ago, people did the experiments between mothers and babies. And they found out, they had split screens, looking at the mothers reacting to the babies, babies and they found out the, what a baby cannot tolerate of all the things a mother can look at her with is a still face. The baby makes a response and still face. Right. So. 
Yeah. There's a lot of data now that yes. shows that yes. we come into the world, men and women, yes. with a primary desire for connection. For connection. Yes. And it's exactly. always in us. Yes. So that exactly. work we that if you give a person a way of feeling good in connection, yes. they'll go for it, which yes. is very good news for everybody, including uh, medicine and patients. You know. Well, thank you for sharing these thoughts about a remarkable novel and its sequels with Voices from Oxford and its audience worldwide. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.